Rich Picks Daily is an online community for traders to exchange smart, straightforward, and profitable investment ideas. And join us today at richpicksdaily.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube to learn useful stock trading secrets and discover the next 10 bagger. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, many time guest, Gianni Kovacevic. How are you doing today, Gianni? I mean, I'm fantastic. And we've got a big jump in the copper price today. So it's timely. We're going to get right to the point. We're going to probably be only 10 minutes today. Bang, bang, bang. Stats, stats, stats. Technicals, technicals, technicals. It's go time. And I'm going to show people why. Perfect. So let's get started. Last time you were on the show, um, Copper was doing well. What has been happening with Copper Bank since you were on the show last? Well, the whole industry has went through a big consolidation. If you look at the index for, for speculation, junior mining shares, the world's largest is the TSX Venture Exchange. And you saw a huge burst of volume, three times more than it was a year before. And it just fell one third of the volume of six weeks ago. And the market was red, red, red every day. Why? Don Cox says it best. Those that know it the best, love it least because they've been disappointed the most. All these guys that have been holding these shares for six, seven, eight years, they got out. There's been this big recalibration and everything gets mixed in with it. You got crypto now, you got gold, but copper is the commodity. Once again, breaking out and the, the, the equities, the things that your listeners are going to be buying, they are nowhere near where they were the last time copper was $4 a pound. And that would be like having, you know, uh, oil. Imagine if oil was $130 a barrel. It would be euphoria like you've never seen before. So it's the calm before the storm. And that's what we're going to talk about. You guys announced today that you are uh, targeting a multi-phase drill program at Copper Creek in Pineal County, Arizona. Can you tell us how big Copper Creek can be potentially? Copper Creek is already one of the largest undeveloped copper porphyries in the world. We know this wow. because there's been some historical studies and over 220,000 meters of drilling has already occurred. Now, we don't look at those historical uh, resource estimates as contemporary, but they are accurate. They were done by qualified people under the, under the new 43101 regulations. 220,000 meters, Rich, do you know how much it costs to drill a meter in the United States? It's up over $300. Wow. So if you want to drill 100,000 meters, you're talking 30 million US dollars. Wow. We've got 220,000 meters on that one project. So the reason we've been carefully looking at the data, looking at a, where to drill more, we want to increase the confidence and size of Copper Creek. It's already one of the biggest. We want to make it undisputed as one of those prime targets for, for an M&A takeout because I believe America is the number one jurisdiction where major mining companies want to have development copper projects in Arizona is the best state. It was the largest production area of copper in the world until Chile surpassed it. And we just happened to be right in the copper corridor, which is where all the action happens. We've got a great address. A lot of money has been spent already. So we need to spend a few million dollars more to answer some unanswered questions to what I believe is going to be a disproportionate benefit for our shareholders. And all that starts right now. That's why we put out that press release. Interesting. I didn't realize how useful copper was until recently. And I listen a lot to Bloomberg and everyone's coming on Bloomberg talking about copper. Everybody like copper experts, investors, mining guys, gold guys, they're talking about copper is in everything. And until I actually started having you on the show, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't realize that copper is in everything. Like it is such a huge commodity. The last time you were on the show, we did discuss the price of copper and you were very bullish on it. Do you still feel the market has lots of room to move up for copper? Absolutely, and that's not just me talking uh, hyperbole. This is based on demand. The demand of copper since 1900 grew 3% CAGR. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. Because it's all about electrification, 75% of all the copper today goes into something to create, transfer, or utilize electrical energy. And the future of energy is electrification. The CAGR growth rate of copper is going to be five, six, seven percent at times in the next decade. Don't lose any sleep about the demand. That's why the price is moving. And on top of that, supply is not caught up. 
And why'd the price move today? Look at copper, it went, went from $4 to $4.15. Right now, as we're speaking, Chile is closing its borders for 30 days. Mm. This is the world's largest producer of copper. Already, demand is, or supply is actually falling. They're not going to produce as much copper as they did the past years. And this is dovetailing in this massive demand. It used to be the China super cycle. Now, it's the global uh, move towards electrification and post-COVID stimulus, over $10 trillion. And America is, is where it's centered at right now, because it's not just the China story. Did you know in 2020, America had a demand of two and a half million tons of copper per year. They used to produce 3 million tons. Today, America has a demand of 1.8 million tons. So demand's fallen because they've exported industry and re-import the things, but supply. America only produced 922,000 tons of copper in the year 2020. Is America gonna need more copper next year and the year after and, the, and for the next 20 years? Absolutely. And where are they going to want to get that supply from? Is they want to move away from this deglobalization? Arizona, which is why major mining companies are going to want high quality, uh, late stage projects, which is what Copper Bank owns. Rich, I have to remind you, it takes 20 years from discovery hole until you just make the production decision for a copper development project. Our projects are at year 15. It is ruinously expensive and it is painfully time consuming. So let's talk about the last time copper was $4 a pound. There was a kind of, it was a mania, euphoria. Copper's $4.15 right now, but the equities haven't moved. So when we bought uh, companies that went through die hard times during the bear market, they were all stock listed. Copper Bank has 81 million shares outstanding and the insiders and founders own 25% of that. We traded 13 million shares at 55 cents in February. We traded 10 million shares at 58 cents in March. We're trading at 58.60 cents. The entire float has been turned over. But more importantly, the last time copper was $4 a pound, the stuff that we bought would be in excess of $3 a share based on our share count. Like this is, this is go time. It's trading at 60 cents. And now we're looking at moving these projects forward, spending a few millions of dollars to have a disproportionate benefit for our shareholders. I think the, 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 the planets have aligned our team can execute. We've done it before. We say what we do, what we do, we say. And I think it's something that people can look at right now as a, a medium long-term valuation play, but also as a, on a technicals basis, a short-term um, trade as well. The 200 day moving average, 53 cents. So just let people are, they can look at a chart, take a look at the company, it trades good volume. And I think um, that's, that's what the, the, the setup is there right now. Now, there's a drill program that you guys are doing that has just been announced. Has the company ever done a comparable drill program to the size of the one that's going on right now before in the past? My team is very qualified, Rich. We've got over 300 years of combined experience. Just look at our webpage. These guys are in their, let's say, late 50s, early 60s. They've been there. They've done that. Our strategy was not to drill a bunch of holes. I already told you, it's ruinously expensive. Copper Creek, 220,000 meters has already been drilled there. Contact Copper, 86,000 meters already drilled there. What I'm talking about doing is answering a few unanswered questions. Phase one, 6,000 meters. Phase two, another 6,000 meters. This is bite size, we can do that. But if you look at our website right now, people can download our latest presentation and just look where we're gonna drill. We're doing these angular holes which, you know, with, with some level of success there, it's a game changer for the deposit. So there's a few ways we can create value right now. One, we can simply look at the, the, the current deposit, the, what was already been drilled, and look at the parameters because copper, when, when copper prices are higher, you can then use a higher copper price to see what's economic. We can look at some byproduct credits that weren't added in the last go around. These are, these are things that are not, the copper's the dominant mineral, but there's other little things that are happening. They all add value. And now, of course, with the drill bit. When we have success, almost all the holes we're drilling are outside the known resource. When you have a hit, that's going to add resource. So it's by spending a little bit of money, we're able to add a lot of value. Answering your question the long way around, my team has got a lot of experience. But that was not what we wanted to do. We want to spend a little bit of money to make a big impact. It starts right now. Institutional investors is key for small cap companies to really take it to the next level. How can Copper Bank create more interest for institutional investors? 
Well, our story is becoming an institutional story and that starts now. We've engaged a group that specializes in institutions that want, they've already told them they want copper stories. They came to us and says, look, we can put you in front of institutions. So in the next three months, I'm gonna be communicating the copper bank story, a little bit more technical, I think with my team to, to these groups that sometimes have a geologist or an engineer on staff. And that's happening week by week, week by week, month by month. So that, that program, which is a three months with another three month add on, because we believe that this copper price is here to stay, probably can even get stronger. And the interest, the people that move the needle for a little company like ours, they've yet to be in the story. They're not investors in copper bank. That comes later. And that's when you get these real um, valuations where when the big money comes in, oh, there's all turnover of the float that happened in February and March. And part of your audience was, was, was there. You guys saw the story a couple different times. And I think both times there was an opportunity to make money short term and of course, longer term, I believe. And that, um, that was done with retail investors, not institutional investors. So yes, we've engaged these groups and I will be speaking week by week uh, to these audiences and that'll be augmented as my team delivers news on the projects with results. And that'll be really the balance of 2021. The higher, the stronger that the copper price stays here, sort of above $354. $4. You know, the old models never even went that high, Rich. They stopped at $4 just to give you the economics. And then when all the dust settles, we still have the built-in organic royalty company. And that's the holy grail. So you've got the projects, you've got expiration projects, and then you got this long, long-term uh, optionality with no time expiry. And if you look at the plausibility of these projects going into production in the next uh, years as we move it forward, no guarantee that that happens. But certainly, that's the that's the finish line. That's the goal. I'm not building a copper mine. We'll partner with someone that can that can do that. Look at the math. Look at the math. Our market cap: 81 million shares, 60 cents. It's 48 million Canadian, 40 million U.S. dollars. I already told you how much it costs to drill these things out. I already told you that the previous market cap high was in excess of 200 million. Everything we own. But look at the royalty opportunity. If you look at a typical um, medium-sized copper mine in the world, not, not using our example, but that if they put out 100,000 tons of metal, that's kind of what you're looking for. Copper's trading at $9,000 a ton. So per year the average medium-sized copper project would put out 900 million to a billion dollars of, of, um, of, of revenue per year on, how, on the mine life. Now, if you put a 1% royalty on the project, that pays out $10 million a year. 2%, 20 million per year for like 20 or 25 years. Like we've got that royalty company sitting in Copper Bank, you know, when all these other things occur, no guarantee they happen, but when, when and if they do occur, we still have that, that revenue generator for the real patient investor that wants to stick around for the longer run. So it just, it's, it's a company that's got near-term, medium-term, and long-term value creation. And most of the money has already been spent. Most of the risk has already been incurred by other people. We now spend a few million dollars to answer some unanswered questions. And I think that's a good place to leave it at. When you first came on the show, the stock was at 30 cents and it went 60 and it's just under 60 right now. So it's pretty much up almost 100%. It's been around 100% since you joined. It went to 82, 83. That's right. And then it, now it's consolidated. And now we've had this, what, 22 million shares have traded at this copper price, at this uh, at this share price. It's bifurcating. It's creating I, I, a floor. I believe there's some, there's some institutional guys waiting there. And when the next um, volume burst is, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I think... Um, I, I think it's, we'll see that if a new all-time high is achieved, I think it's very plausible. And the uh, previous market cap high of all this stuff, last time copper was $4, I say it again, well, well in excess of $3 a share. And people will not see a lot of dilution because we don't have to spend a lot of money. We own everything 100%. I don't must have to do anything. There's no gun to my head. We're very careful of dilution. We throw pennies like manhole covers. It's our money. And we're very careful. If we spend a, a, pay, a dollar on the project, it's got to be very accretive rich. It's got to add a lot of value. Good. We're not, we're not, we don't want to do the risky stuff. We want to do the high value stuff. Oh, that's music to my ears. If there was one thing you would want shareholders to know today about Copper Bank, what would it be? Well, it's timing. You know, it was always a strategy that required $3.50 a pound copper. That's when these projects, we can actually be, we can look at plausible economics. 
And if we look at the historical economic studies, which were done in 2013, 2012, 2020, if you want to go to the previous ones to, to the ones published in 2023 or 2013, the scales end at $4 rich. There was never a time that people thought that we would have $4 copper. And if you look at the net present value of these projects, every 25 cents that the copper price goes higher based on historical economic studies, there's a $300 million lift in net present value. Wow. Now, copper's trading right now 415, Chile's on strike. Demand is going to surpass supply for the next years. Copper's going to be very dear. So it's not, it's not going away. I don't believe. I don't lose any sleep at night that, that, that it's going to be oversupplied. It's going to get interesting. And there's going to be an incentive. The price will be strong. Or as I like to say, it's going to be stronger for longer. And that gives more and more confidence. Every week, every month that those prices stay there, eventually we get these tipping points. We've already had a couple. But as I said already three times in the interview, the last time copper was $4 a pound, there was euphoria. The valuations were still 6x, 7x higher than today. There's a disconnect. Either the price of copper is going to collapse or they're going to play a little catch up here. One or the other. I'm betting on the catch up. If a shareholder or anyone that's watching this video wants to get in contact with you, what's the best way for them to reach you? I encourage everyone that's seriously interested, download our presentation. You don't have to be a mining engineer. Where are we looking at drilling? How much is it going to cost? On that, you have my email. And more importantly, if people want up-to-date, really more copper-centric news uh, and, and data and graphs and charts, Twitter, at uh, Gianni KOV. Follow me there, and I like to share things. And of course, there's still which my book, which some people may have seen. If you have a U.S. address, I will have my publisher send you a copy of this beautiful hardcover book. And I think it's something, it's like having a five-hour um, meeting or dinner with me. It reads like a novel. It's a page turner. 26,000 copies have been printed. It's also on audible.com. It's, it's an ebook. It's in German. And I think that reinforces it. Published four years ago, but it's very current because copper is the topical commodity and nothing's changed. The future of energy is electrification and electrification demands copper. Thank you so much for your time today. The CEO of Copper Bank, Gianni Kovacevic. Remember guys, Rich TV Live is strictly for education entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence. Always do your research before you invest in anything that we discuss here on Rich TV Live. If you like the video, smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and smash that subscribe button so you never miss a video or news or an interview with a CEO like Gianni. Gianni, always a pleasure having you on the show, my friend. Hope to have you on again soon. With news, we will be there, yep. Okay, great, guys. If you're not winning, you're not watching. This is Rich and Gianni saying have a nice day.